What's up guys, War here, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm bringing you the first build guide of very many in season five. And I've playing, been playing Sorcerer day three uh, and I've just been having an absolute blast with Sorcerer. I leveled up with uh, Incinerate. I got to play a little bit of Blizzard, which we'll have a build guide later, but I've really zeroed in on Bouncy, Bouncy, Mario, Fireball. And this build has been unbelievably fun. Okay, the build is very, very strong, very, very fun. It's by far probably one of the best clear speed builds for Sorceress in Season 5. Now, I know that there's probably going to be one better that I'm going to bring in another video, but this one is pretty dang good. So let's go over the gear, skills, Paragon board, all the stuff that you need to know for this build. And this is just version 1, guys. This is a non-mythic unique build so that way you don't have to worry about like all oh, crap i don't have this that or that you know day three into the season so eventually you can make those upgrades i'll note where those are but let's get right into it so first thing starting off is our skill tree here guys we're gonna break all this stuff down uh it's pretty straightforward from the bouncy fireballs builds that we've done in the past but we got one point into each of these. This is just two points. We're going to have one passive or one uh, basic on the skill bar that we're not actually going to use. But I will give you some skill options to change if you really want to. So we got both of these. We're not going to use them. Uh, we got Firebolt to be our very first enchantment slot, which is great. It's just going to cause everything to be burning, which is fantastic. Allows us to do more damage. Then, of course, we're coming down here to Fireball. We max this out, and then we go into Greater Fireball. It deals 10% of the burning damage you've applied to enemies as additional direct damage. This is very, very powerful. Uh, if you wanted to do destructive, you definitely could. But if you don't have the, the three enemies to hit, then it's really not, not super good. This one is just better damage overall, so go with greater. Then we got one point of devastation for more mana to go into elemental dominance to have more damage. Because uh, we should always be above 50 mana. Keep that in mind. Uh, next, we got Flame Shield just for, uh, you know, our panic button. We got Teleport into Shimmering for DR. Then we got three points in the Glass Cannon for more damage. We got one point to Elemental Attunement for that lucky hit chance to be able to reset one of our three defensive skills. Um, Fireball, you'll notice, has a 40% lucky hit chance with all the bounces that we're doing and the amount of explosions. This is very good. Uh, and then, of course, Ice Armor into Shimmering Ice Armor for the Mana Regen and Additional Shield. Then we're going to come down. We're doing Precision Magic for even more additional lucky hit. You notice if we take this off, our lucky hit chance is only 35%, which is still really, really good. Uh, you could do that if you really wanted to. I like the additional lucky hit. Uh, wanted to align the elements for DR as well as Mana Shield maxed out for DR. And then Protection for Barrier because it's very important for Sorceresses because we're so fragile that we need Barriers to help us with uh, survivability because we really don't have a lot of life then we got a lightning spear into invoked this is for stun as well as uh vulnerability then we max out inner flames for more damage we max out devouring blaze for more damage and then we also max out crippling flames this is important with the lucky hit so that way we can immobilize our enemies which allows us to do even more damage then I'm going to come down here. I'm taking one into permafrost for more damage and then horror frost for more damage. But you're like, wait, war. This isn't a freeze build. How do you freeze enemies? I'll talk about it in the gear. Uh, then we max out fiery surge for more uh, mana regen. We max out soul fire for more damage. Or excuse me. Uh, so our pyromancy skills cost less, but we deal increased damage. And then one into warmth for uh, health regen. If you want to add more to this, you definitely can. Uh, then we ma then we got Esther's Ferocity for even more damage. So that is the skills, guys. Now let me just talk about a few changes that you could make. I'm not running an ultimate here. So what, if you really wanted to, what you could do, take the points out of Precision Magic. You could put them into Conjuration Mastery. We can end up adding Ice Blades if you guys really want. We could take the uh, basic off the skill tree and add Ice Blades if you really want to. So that is something that you could do. You would just pop these three out go this for you get even more damage and mana regen for each conjuration which is very important you would have to take points out of horror frost um i think to to really do this so you could do this here take these points away go ice blades and then the second point into uh warmth and then you would just replace ice blades and put it here either version is more than fine like the 35 percent lucky hit chance is still very very strong 
the additional cooldown from Ice Blaze would be good. And then you get the additional movement speed, damage, and mana regeneration per active uh, conjuration, which would be just these two, but still, that's, I mean, that's 6% um, on each, and then it's 12% mana regeneration, which is still really, really good. So, though, I, I go back and forth depending on what I'm doing with this, but those are really, really good. Now, into the skill tree. Now, our real quick, our second uh, enhancement is Fireball Enchantment. This is very good for clearing as you continue, continue to level. This is very good for just going through every single thing in the game except for fighting bosses i would probably swap to teleport if you're not do if you're like not going to do bosses or if you run into you could do ice blades for even more cooldown both of those are very strong options but because i've mainly been doing like all clearing stuff hell tides nightmare dungeons and then the infernal horde which is absolutely insane fireball is very very good for all that um one thing to mention with this build is it does struggle a little bit with single target damage but with that said the build is still very 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 good so let's go into our gear. We got a helmet here. We got concentration. So damage reduction is the sorceress's best friend because we're so fragile. So we got conjuration or concentration here for uh, damage reduction when we cast a conjuration skill uh, for five seconds. So this is very good. We got ever living for even more DR or less damage, less damage. It's not DR, but we take less damage from CC'd enemies or vulnerable. This will always be active. Then we got Gloves of the Illuminati. This is required. You want to try to get as low of a fireball power as possible, down to 0%. To Balt's Will, this is very, very good. Um, this is to help us with our mana issues and then dealing more damage. I got I got these ones last night, and I got to put those on, even though it's not maxed. However, if you don't have to Balt's yet because you have not fought Dur Duriel whatsoever, then you can come in and grab, where is it? Did I get rid of them? Oh, God. I hope I didn't get rid of them. Uh, oh, here they are. So you could take pants like this with intelligence armor, and then you could put Ever Living on here or add, like, Disobedience or Juggernaut, something like that, to hit your armor caps. That's really good. Boots. Doom Treads. We got Concussive Strikes. Always get Attacks Reduce Evade cooldown. All right? And we're putting Concussive Strikes on here for the lucky hit to daze them and deal increased damage. However... As soon as I get a stronger one that's not this low, I'm running Esus. Esus here, it would just be so much better um, than Concussive Strikes because of the increased critical strike damage and move speed. But uh, I just have a super low one right now. But Esus or G these normal boots would be just fine. Of course, Staff of Endless Rage is 100% uh, required for the build. So make sure you try to get a good one with a high damage on here. I'm still missing 14%. On our... Uh, first ring um we're doing uh what is this i actually need to update this one where's my other ring uh th this is supposed to be this is supposed to be ancient flame ancient flame for attack speed we want ancient flame for the increased attack speed here okay this is really really good while both Esus is active very very easy to do so we get the increased attack speed more fireballs equals more damage then we got tal Rashes, of course pretty straightforward and then we got three curses on our amulet with increased critical strike damage to meteor and fireball and then double this against healthy targets very very powerful um on your amulet i got a bad one right now you really want cooldown probably conjuration mastery and then devouring blaze um mastery on there so that way you do even more damage so similar like this one right here would be perfect i'm still trying to re-roll it so cooldown conjuration mastery and then you want devouring blaze I'm still rolling on it. I'm only doing a couple more rolls. Otherwise, I just got to wait to find one. Um, so those are the gear pieces. Now, I will say, besides the switches that I offered, um, Ancient Flame is really up to you. It's a flex power if you really want. Um, this could be a damage power. It could be concentration. It could be storm swell. It could be, you know, whatever you want to do to deal more damage. It could be accelerated, like acceleration or accelerator for 25% damage if you want. This just feels very, very good when you're going trying to clear, when you're doing the Infernal Hordes, etc. So the increased attack speed is very important. Not to mention that the lucky hit chance to make enemies vulnerable is, is just an addition. It's very, very powerful. I just really like that. Um, next, into our Paragon, guys. I'm not going to break everything down through the Paragon. Uh, the link to this will be down to my Mobilitics profile. You can go check this out and just get everything that you need to do. But the glyphs that we are using is Tactician for more damage in all res. 
We are doing Elementalist for even more damage. Then we're going to be doing uh, Pyromaniac for more fire damage and give us 10% multiplicative damage. Then, of course, we're taking Searing Hit, Heat, max this out. Uh, then we're coming down and getting Destruction for even more crit damage, which is insane. We come over to our next board and we grab Enchanter for even more damage. Then with Frigid Fate, which is maxed, so that way we do even more damage there. Then we come up and we grab Exploit for more Vuln damage and 10% Multiplicative damage. And then our last one, we got Flame Feeder for even more damage. And then uh, you deal 10% 10 Multiplicative damage, increased direct damage to burning enemies, which is fantastic. Enchanter is my real flex um, node here. I like Enchanter. You could definitely do something else here if you really wanted to. But this is a flex one, so feel free to mess around with it in the Paragon board. So that's the, that is the build, guys. Very, very powerful. What I'm going to do real quick is I'm just going to go through a 97 just to kind of showcase how the build actually works. The build is very straightforward. Um, so far, I've been able to do all content. You can clear all bosses. You can clear up to T100 Nightmare Dungeons. I've cleared T6 in the uh, Infernal Hordes with this build, which I'll have more videos on later. Uh, but this is really fun. It's straightforward. You just pop all your stuff, and you just, you just run. You just blast. Remember, you get more mana and more damage the, the more bouncies that you get. So make sure you try to, you know, shoot them like kind of at a distance with your mouse. So that way you get the the big bounces across the board there. Um, but yeah, the the build is so good for clearing. So good for clearing. It just, it deletes everything on the board. I'm so happy that uh, Bouncy Bouncy Fireball is kind of like is back to a degree right you know what i mean it's like back in my words like i love this build back in what was it season two or three uh we were using this to farm the hell tie because it was by far the best and it's just super easy now you are gonna see real quick here the uh the the like disadvantage it has against um against like single target damage. However, it is still pretty decent, especially when you get them staggered. So it's not bad. I, I still think it's very, it's good. It's just not as good as I thought it was gonna be. But other, besides that, I mean, it's, it's super, super good. So we come in here, we got more glyphs. We gotta level up. Adept is to 15 now, which is fantastic. So yeah, guys, that's Bouncy Bouncy Fireball. Um, the mythics that we're gonna eventually put into the build um, we are going to be putting in our helmet. We're going to be putting Shaco in here. Uh, in our chest piece, we're going to be doing Tyrael's Might eventually when we get it. And then in our other ring slot, we are going to be doing Starless Skies. Because of the channeling and how much we can just uh, blast with this ability, uh, those are going to be the three that we're going to add. So uh, Shaco, Tyrael's Might, and then Starless Skies. However, if you don't want to run a normal helmet like this, it, it, you can 100% run Godless or God Slayer Crown. This is very, very good. It's going to give you um, good damage to elites, max life all stat, and then cooldown. And then when you stun, freeze, or immobilize an enemy. So we should be stunning, immobilizing all the time. And then we should get the pull, and then it increased damage, especially against bosses. Now, back to if you want to run Horfrost for the freeze. That's why on our gear, we have the lucky hit chances to stun. Lucky hit chance to freeze and lucky hit chance to freeze. So you want at least two for that. So you can get up to over 30% on the lucky hit, which is very strong. I need this to be immobilized. We really want to have the additional chances to mobilize here, but still it's fine. If you swap your pants out, then put immobilize there. It'll be perfectly fine. But yeah, guys, that's the build. Thank you guys so much for watching. Like the video. Let's try to get this over 50 likes. Comment down below. Let me know what you think about this or any other suggestions that you have for the build. I'm always looking to improve it, so let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new, guys. And as always, stay gaming, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.